Hello everyone, Big Clingy here, and it's been a while since I did an update video, so I thought I'd do one. Since we just reached the end of a dungeon arc in Persona 4. So, Persona 4, a lot of people in the comments have told me they've felt like this series has been moving along very, very quickly. And I definitely see that. It's been over 70 episodes, but I do feel like the game has been going at a decent pace. I was wondering what you all felt about this, because I'm really worried that I'm rushing the game. I hope I'm giving all of the dungeons, characters, social links, and bosses the time that they deserve. So, I'd like a little bit of input. It might not be taken into effect for the next few videos, because I like to record things in advance. As a general reminder, considering that I have full-time work right now, I often record videos in batches of 5 to 7 on the weekends. So I'm usually quite ahead of any given upload. So just bear that in mind in the comments. But I'd like a bit of input or feedback here. Is there anything that you'd like me to focus on a bit more? Any areas you feel I could improve on? Anything that you'd like to see in particular? Any input is appreciated. Though one thing that I'll just quickly address here, because I've been getting this question a lot. Am I going to be showing the bad endings for failing to rescue someone in time? So, I recorded footage in advance from a New Game Plus playthrough of the Social Link branch that I didn't take, dialogue choices that I didn't have enough stats for, and the Super Boss. I thought I had pretty much everything, and those were the one thing that I didn't record from that run. And in order to see most of them, I would need to redo most of the game via a New Game Plus. Bear in mind that I've already played through this game once in full earlier this year, once again for a full New Game Plus, and now the third time this year for the recorded series. So, I don't know, can you really blame me for not having that much motivation to do a fourth full playthrough? Just to record those scenes. They are available on YouTube. I wouldn't recommend you look them up if you haven't beaten the game, because the later ones are definitely spoilers. I might show these at some point, although I will say that I don't personally consider them bad endings. More non-standard game overs, since they don't roll the credits or allow a new game plus. They just send you back a week after the typical Velvet Room game over scene. I will definitely be showing the game's actual bad endings, but those come later. One other thing is the Other Sun social link, Yumi. I'm thinking that I won't upload that until I've got to the end of the game, and here's why. On the final day of the game, you can talk to all of your social links for a brief epilogue conversation on their story arc. Most of these aren't super important to the character overall, they're just a nice thing on your final day. But Yumi's epilogue, I feel, clears up a lot of issues that people have with some of her later ranks, and I feel personally is vital to her character development, and so I've already recorded that from a New Game Plus file, and I want to show that with her full social link, because you need it for full context. But I can't show that now, obviously, or I would spoil the day that the game ends on. In general on Persona 4 though, something that I found really interesting recording this is that I feel like I've always had something to talk about at any given time, and this I was not expecting going into the series. When I did my first test run, I had a huge segment over Summer Vacation where I actually felt really bored with the game, and I was worried about doing a playthrough because I thought that I'd run out of things to say at this point. I've been through summer vacation, I didn't run out of things to talk about, and I still have a lot that I want to talk about for the rest of the whole game. Even during dungeons, I've always had things to say during the rerun grinding segments, during the parts where I feel like we're just going through similar looking rooms and there isn't that much that's changing. I don't know what you think, but I've personally been pleasantly surprised by how much I've had to say about this game. And in terms of total length, I'm guessing it will maybe be around 120 parts, which is a lot, but by Persona standards, it's quite small. Persona 3 ended up going on for 170-ish. And Persona 5, so I'm playing Royal on my own time, I'm doing it semi-rushed, not even listening to all of the dialogue and mashing through all of the thou art, the art, blah blah blah, arcana explanation scenes, and I just beat the Ship Palace, I'm not even at the Vanilla Games finale, and I just hit 117 hours. 
I am not even at Royal's new semester yet. And this is a non-commentated, semi-rushed playthrough. So when I finally do cover P5R, I dread to think how long of a series that's going to be. So that's enough about Persona. The real reason why I'm making this update video is because it was originally going to be an announcement that I was going to be starting a different playthrough on the side of Persona 4, and so that videos for it might be slowing down for a little bit. I was planning on a structure of maybe four Persona 4 videos, two videos of this other game. But today, I think those plans fell through because I just played the demo and I wasn't all that impressed, and I hate the fact that I'm saying that. This game is Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. So here's a mini my thoughts on the Crash 4 demo. I just feel like the physics are a little bit weird, jumps in particular feel a bit slippery, even when not on ice. The level design is also maybe not exactly the greatest. A lot of enemies and obstacles are not fully intuitive on first glance how to handle them. For example, I had to die once to the spear cannon fisherman before I realised you were supposed to slow down time to get past them. The grind rail segment in Dino Dash was also a little bit weird in that it took me several deaths to realise that you had to press the crouch button to switch to the bottom of the rail. I feel it would be much more intuitive if you toggled that with up and down on the control stick. That first rail segment also introduces way too many elements at once. It's your first time ever on a grind rail, so you're getting used to how that feels. You need to jump to avoid rocks. You need to figure out that you can switch to the bottom part of the rail. And you also are coming to grips with the mass power that lets you toggle objects on and off. I feel like they maybe could have introduced all those elements separately more gradually. It does sadden me that I feel this way because I've seen some of the early trailers and the developers talking about the game and they clearly have so much passion for it, but it just goes to show that designing a good game, especially a platformer, is very hard. And having played modern platformers like Rayman Legends, Tropical Freeze and Super Mario Odyssey, my standards for platformers are now very, very high. And it's still amazing that the original Crash Trilogy, well, at least on the Insane Trilogy, Crash 1, PS1, I don't think is a good game, but Crash 2 and 3 are amazing. It's amazing they still hold up well to this day, but that really shows how good Naughty Dog's original level design was. And I feel like a lot of attempts to recapture that magic just haven't worked that well. Obviously, I'm not completely writing off this game, it's before release, they have more time to iron out things. I'm just a little disappointed, and for the first time in my entire life, I'm actually trying to cancel a pre-order. But to avoid any things on a sour note, I do have a few positives to say about the demo. The first is, I actually found Cortex the most fun part of it. The fact that he doesn't have a double jump actually makes the level design a lot better because now you know exactly which jumps are makeable via a jump or a dash. With Crash's double jump with the new physics, it can be a little hard to tell how far you can go and what to risk and what not to. When a character only has one jump, it seems way easier to design levels for them. Also, I found their dashing and turning enemies into platforms gameplay to be pretty enjoyable overall. And, okay, this is kind of weird, I don't know how many other people think this way, but I've actually felt that Cortex's bumbling comic relief villain personality takes a lot of the edge off of repeated failures and deaths, since that's actually kind of in character for him. What may be the saddest part of my demo experience is that when I got to the end of Cortex's segment, I was actually disappointed that I had to switch to Crash and play the second half of the level as him. A Crash game should not make me wish I was playing as Cortex all the time. Second major positive, I actually really like the chase segments in Dino Dash. Which really says something because that's a style of gameplay that's very hard to get right. Do it wrong and the player just will not have enough time to react to obstacles. And it will all feel like artificial difficulty. I was able to get through both of the chase segments in that level on my first try blind without dying. Not only that, but it actually felt fun and exciting at the same time. I felt that pulse-pounding feeling of, oh crap, the floor fell out in front of me, how do I react to that? But 
I still had enough time to realize what I needed to do and to work out a solution. It's like one of the original Noidog designers was talking about when he mentioned these levels. He said that the real threat is they remove the element of time. You have a limited time to react to all of these obstacles and to figure out a plan for how to get around them. And it was actually really exciting playing these segments. So props to Toys for Bob for getting this right. So, I may have sounded overly negative here, I'm really hoping that they do do a good job with this game, and who knows, if there is some positive word of mouth when it releases, I may still consider picking it up. I just hope they iron out the jump physics and crashes segments, and make some of the enemies and obstacles a little more intuitive to deal with. One other thing that I will praise, the backdrops are very characterful and expressive, but that doesn't really mean anything if the levels themselves aren't fun to play. If any of you in the comments have played this demo, tell me what you think. I'm probably a grumpy old elitist because I grew up, literally, with the old Crash titles. And I suppose we'll see how the wider fanbase reacts to the game on release. But for now, I'm a little disappointed with the demo, but it does have promise, so I'm hoping that they can figure things out. And that should be all I want to talk about in this quick update video. I will see you next time for more Persona 4.